Hey, I'm Sabine from Pangolin Photo Safaris and this afternoon I'm sitting out here on our beautiful eco pool at the Pangolin Chobe Hotel in Chobe National Park in Botswana. I would like to talk to you today about why manual mode with automatic ISO is my preferred shooting mode. But before I get started, please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon so that you can get informed about our new videos. In wildlife photography, things are happening quickly. Animals are constantly on the move with changing backgrounds and if you're shooting outside, of course, the ambient light might, might also change from moment to moment. For this reason, I disregard full manual mode as my preferred shooting mode. Because by the time I would have set up my aperture, my shutter speed and my ISO to get the perfect exposure, my bird would have probably flown off the stick or my elephant would have turned his backside to me. So I need to be much faster. Other options would be shooting in aperture or shutter priority mode. Aperture and shutter priority mode also restrict me in a way that I am, can either only be in charge of my creative aperture or in charge of my motion control. But to be honest, as a wildlife photographer, I really would like to be in charge of both of them at the same time. Of course, you could change indirectly your shutter speed when you shoot aperture priority or your aperture when you shoot shutter priority by adjusting your ISO. However, this once again will take some time and with ever-changing backgrounds and light conditions, it is a little bit inaccurate. Now imagine a bird flying against a very bright blue sky and you are tracking that bird. All of a sudden he starts flying from the blue sky in front of a very dark green tree line. If you shoot in aperture priority mode, what will happen is, as you track the bird from the very bright light conditions towards the dark green background, your camera has to adjust your exposure to still give you a properly exposed image. So what your camera will do as you track the bird from the bright to the dark area, it will actually drop your shutter speed. Now if you photograph an animal that is in motion, a slow shutter speed, you will end up with a blurred picture and you probably lost a shot that way. Now with shutter priority mode, you can of course now dial in the shutter speed required for the situation and you can track a bird from bright to dark and your camera will maintain that shutter speed. However, in shutter speed you leave it up to the camera to choose your aperture. And that once again can be a downside because you really most of the time in wildlife photography want a shallow depth of field to separate your subject from the busy backgrounds. In shutter priority, it could happen that you photograph a moving subject and all of a sudden you end up with, for example, an aperture of f16, where it means that your background is also in focus and distracting away from your subject. In manual with auto ISO, the shutter speed and the aperture will stay put. Doesn't matter if you swing your camera around into different light conditions, these two factors will always stay the same. Only the ISO will now be adjusted to give you the correct exposure. And in my opinion, the ISO is the least creative part of your image, so that is okay. Lots of photographers often connect auto ISO with high ISO numbers and lots of image noise. To be honest, in these days, the digital cameras are so sophisticated and the sensors are so good that you can push your ISO quite a bit. And lots of cameras can easily do an ISO of about 3200 or even 6400 without being too grainy. You can figure out for your own specific camera model, you can make tests and see until what ISO you are comfortably to shoot with. So make a few tests, look back at your computer screen and see when the grain is getting too much. And then if you want to shoot manual auto ISO, all you do is go back to your menu and limit the auto ISO range to an upper value. So let's say you don't like to go above 3200, all you do is head back to your menu and limit the higher maximum for the auto ISO range to 3200, which means that your camera will never ever select a higher ISO. So to summarize the different shooting modes and the advantages or disadvantages, if you shoot in aperture priority, you might risk um, getting unsharp images due to um, not being able to be in charge of the motion control. If you shoot in shutter priority, you might end up with a picture that has too much depth of field for your taste or 
is simply underexposed because you have reached the widest aperture possible and your shutter speed setting was a little bit too high. If you shoot in manual auto ISO, the worst thing that can happen is that you might get a little bit too bright or a little underexposed image. But this is usually very much manageable in post-processing, while still maintaining the creative look that you intended in the first place once you took the picture, which was your motion control and your depth of field. Now what I have to mention though is that you have to have a look if your camera can do manual auto ISO and still be able to adjust the exposure compensation. Not all camera models are capable of that. You might be able to dial in manual mode and automatic ISO, but then if you go to your exposure compensation, you will see all of a sudden you can't adjust it up and down anymore. If you have a camera like that, I would probably recommend rather staying in aperture priority mode, because then you're still in charge of the exposure of your image, whereas auto ISO then would limit you and just you have to rely on your camera's light meter. However, most cameras, modern cameras, um, are able to do manual plus auto ISO and still be able to adjust the exposure compensation. All right, I hope you liked this episode and maybe you got a few tips and can use this shooting mode for yourself. If you have any comments, please leave them below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button so that you get notified of our new videos. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon on Safari with us. Bye-bye.